And now I hand it over to our project manager, Alwyn. Alwyn? Good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Alwyn Ramirez. I'm with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Highway Division. It's headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. I work in the major project section. Steve McLaughlin and I are the project managers on the project that we'll be discussing this evening. Unfortunately, Steve couldn't be with us this evening due to an illness. I'd like to begin by reading the following statement. MassDOT's mission is to provide transportation infrastructure, which is safe, reliable, robust, and resilient. We work to provide a transportation system which can strengthen the state's economy and improve the quality of life for all. Our focus this evening is that of the superstructure replacement and widening of bridge number B16052. The structure carries Boker Overpass over the Massachusetts Turnpike, that's I-90, MBTA and CSX Railroad Lines, and Ipswich Street, which pertains to the city of Boston. Before we begin, I'd like to mention the following. A handout has been prepared and posted to the MassDOT website, along with the hearing notice and a project flyer. You'll find the, this documentation may be useful to you in understanding the, the project, and submitting formal comments in response to this presentation. This project was advertised in the Boston Globe and Boston Sun on October 12th and 19th, respectively. The other publications in which the project was advertised included El Mundo, The Samson, and The Boston Guardian. They were published on October 12th, the October 20th, and October 26th of this year, respectively. During the presentation, we'll explain the purpose of the hearing, provide an overview for the right-of-way procedures, present the project design, and open it up for questions and comments in a Q&A session at the very end. Finally, we'll explain how you can submit your comments and questions about the project after tonight. Comments received within 10 business days of the hearing will be included within the official hearing transcript. Next slide, please. I believe... Uh, Next yes. slide, please. Before we can um, advance to the next slide, uh, yeah. let me take a chance to actually go through the Zoom control so that everybody can participate uh, appropriately. Thank you. Thank you, Alwyn. Uh, once again, my name is Hong uh, Pham. I am one of Mass DOT producers uh, today. Um, and I will be providing the technical support as well as facilitating questions at the end presentation. Uh, I have my friend here, Taylor, uh, who is right now controlling the screen. And as I noted earlier, um, as noted earlier, uh, this meeting is available in Spanish, um, Cantonese, Mandarin, as well as Arabic. And let me take a moment to go through this Zoom basics that you see on the screen here. Uh, you are all joined in this meeting muted and without video, but we do have a Q&A session later where you are able to unmute your microphone or, um, with the microphone icon at the bottom, and you can raise your hand um, with the raise hand icon. Uh, so that's when we will give you the microphone to speak and provide your comments and the Q&A, uh, during the Q&A. Uh, if you are having difficulty hearing me at all and you're having internet issues at this point, you can call in with the phone number you see on the screen, 646-931-3900. Uh, using the webinar ID 864-5520-1069. I also see that there is someone who's calling in through the phone. Um, if you'd like to raise your hand, you can dial star nine and it will, Zoom would um, basically raise your hand for you. And then to unmute yourself, you can dial star six. And if you're having Zoom technical issues altogether, you can um, call the 888 number you see in the screen, 888-799-9. 666. Closed caption is generated um, currently by Zoom and it may not be accurate. Um, you can use the uh, view button at the bottom of the screen in order to adjust the meeting view setting to your preference. Cool. So 
as you already noticed, this virtual public hearing is recorded. Uh, Mass uh, DOT may choose to retain and distribute the video, uh, still images, audio, and or transcript. All parts of this hearing are considered public record. By continuing attendance uh, with this virtual public hearing, you consent to participate in the recorded event. If you're uncomfortable in being recorded, please uh, keep your microphone muted, uh, turn off your camera, or excuse yourself from the hearing altogether. Your microphone and webinar, once again, is automatically disabled upon entering this hearing. This, there is a Q&A uh, session at the end of the formal presentation. I have put out a survey, so your feedback is very important for us. It, provide, it helps us improve in the future presentation. On this slide, uh, it talks about MassDOT's policy on diversity and civil rights. If you would like to know more about that policy, please um, contact the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights or reach out via this web uh, URL you see in the screen. It is www.mass.gov slash non-discrimination hyphen in hyphen transportation hyphen program. Once again, all questions and comments are welcome and appreciated. However, we do request that you refrain from any disrespectful comments and we are very glad to have you here uh, with us tonight. And uh, with that, I will hand it over to Alwyn for the project presentation. Thank you, Hung. Uh, once again, my name is Alwyn Ramirez. I'm the project manager, one of the project managers on this project. This is the Boker overpass over the I-90, the Mass Bike, MBTA and Ipswich Street. Um, I'd like to express my gratitude to the following organizations. Next slide, please. The Federal Highway Administration, Emerald Necklace Conservancy, Charles Gate Alliance, Espo Mountain Association, DCR or Department of Conservation and Recreation, the MBTA, MASCO, Registry of Motor Vehicles, City of Cambridge, the City of Boston, the Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Solomon Foundation, the Boston Guardian, the Boston Globe, the Fenway News, Boston Sun, Boston Red Sox Organization, Boston University, El Mundo, and the Samson or Sampton. I'd like to now introduce our panel and it consists of the following. Representing MassDOT, we have Joseph Doucette. He is the District 6 Assistant, Assistant Project Development Engineer. We have Glenda Rossetti is the right-of-way agent. And the producer and facilitator are Hung Fam and Kayla Souza. The design team consists of Scott Carpenter and Prest Preston Huckabee from Gill Engineering, Daniel Adams from Landing Studio, Jessica Liza and Taylor O'Neill from Howard Stein Hudson, Alyssa Jacobs from Epsilon Associates, and our sonographer this evening is Sarah Abdulrahman, excuse me, Abdulrahman from Advanced Court Reporters. In terms of our agenda for this evening, we'll have a, a project context. How will your property be impacted? How they would get here, purpose and scope, project overview, existing and proposed alternatives, alternatives that were considered, anticipated construction staging, our next steps. And there, once again, the hearing will conclude with a question and answer towards the end of the session. The purpose of this hearing is to present the current proposed design and to solicit your input regarding this project. As the plans are not yet complete, we may not be able to answer all your questions or respond to all your comments at this time or this evening. Our focus this evening is that of the superstructure replacement and widening of bridge B16052. The structure carries, once again, it's the Boker overpass over the Massachusetts Turnpike, that's I-90, MBTA and CSX, CSX, pardon, CSX railroad lines, and Ipswich Street. 
At the onset, I'd like to define a few terms for those of you who are not familiar with these terms. Actually, this term, the superstructure. It's the component of a bridge which supports the deck or writing surface of the bridge. The superstructure consists of the components that are actually span over the obstacle the bridge is intended to cross. It includes the bridge deck, the structural members, the parapets, handrails, sidewalk, lighting, and drainage features. Next slide, please. In this slide, the bridge project is shown in blue. The project shown in purple is the Fenway Action Transportation Plan and Back Bay Fence Pathways. This project pertains to the city of Boston. Just north of the bridge project, shown in brown, is the Child's Gate Park Revitalization Project. That is being proposed by the Emerald Necklace Conservancy, the Child's Gate Alliance, and the Esplanade Association. And to the very north, shown in green, is the other Mastod project. That's the Sorrel Drive over the Boca Ramps project. This project is scheduled to be advertised in 2027. The project is currently in its infancy. We anticipate a preliminary design for that project to occur in the, this winter of 23-24. Upon eventual conclusion uh, of all the projects, we'll, they will have pedestrian and bicyclist connectivity. In terms of cost, the superstructure replacement and bridge widening is currently at 90 million. 80% is funded by the federal government. The remaining 20% is funded by the state of Massachusetts. Presently, we're scheduled to advertise this project in August of 2024, that's next year. Next slide, please. How will you be impacted? Well, there are no anticipated right-of-way impacts or takings associated with this project. Uh, I'll let Glenda Rossetti, a right-of-way agent, will now speak in terms of that. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Glenda Rossetti, and I represent the Right-of-Way Bureau and MassDOT. The Right-of-Way Bureau is responsible for acquiring all of the necessary rights in private and public lands for the design, construction, and implementation of this project. The current design plans indicates that no right-of-way will be required. However, if that changes, affected property owners will be contacted by personnel from the Right-of-Way Bureau or consultants representing MassDOT. The procedures used must comply with state and federal regulations governing the acquisition process. Affected property owners' rights are protected under our Massachusetts general laws, primarily chapter 79. If a project is receiving federal funds, the property owners' rights are further defined under Title III of the Real, state, uh, Real Property Acts of 1970 as amended. Once again, no takings are anticipated for this project at this time. With that, I will turn the presentation back to Owen. Thanks. Thank you, Glenda. How did we get here? The bridge is located on a MassDOT property. The roadway approaches are located on DCR property. Its switch street pertains to the city of Boston. The project was initiated in the fall of 2021. In the winter of 2022-23, the conceptual plans were revised to include the bridge widening portion of the project. It included a shared use path, Charles Gate West and Charles Gate East roadway, and to the west, a pedestrian only sidewalk over I-90, MBTA and CSX railroad lines and Ips Ipswich Street. In the spring of 2023, these conceptual plans were submitted to MassDOT. In the summer of 2023, the preliminary design was submitted to MassDOT. And today we're having this virtual design public hearing. Why was this project initiated? As a result of engineering analysis, it was determined that the bridge superstructure warrant replacement. This is also based on latest inspections reports that showed that the bridge deck, the superstructure are in very poor condition. On the I-90 or Mass Pike, the overpass was struck by overheight vehicles on several occasions. The bridge currently has severely corroded steel, the bridge piers are deteriorating, and its service life is diminished. In terms of existing condition, conditions, excuse me, the bridge was built in 1964 and rehabilitated in 1984. Their current infrastructure does not support multimodal movement. 
the bridge is not ADA compliant and it's uninviting for pedestrians. There are environmental, excuse me, there are environmental impacts associated with the Muddy River, the Chicago's Gate Park, and the Back Bay Fence. As one can see from this slide, the deck and sidewalks are deteriorating and are in need of repair. Again, this slide shows more deterioration. Above on the bridge, there is exposed rebar, cracks, and, and the armor joint exhibits deterioration. This slide depicts the deterioration underneath. There's exposed rebar and noticeable cracks within the pier, as you can see from this, this slide. This slide depicts the non-compliance. On the left, we have a bicyclist tra traversing on the sidewalk instead of a path. On the right, we have pedestrians walking on a non-compliant sidewalk. What do we hope to accomplish? The purpose and scope, to replace the superstructure of the Boker overpass over I-90, MBTA and CSX railroad lines and Ipswich Street. Reconstruct the Boker overpass and Boylston Street intersection. Remove the existing deficient off-ramp structure over the Muddy River. That is, that is the Charles Gate East ramp, if that's what I'm referring to. Widen the portion of the structure will provide pathways along Charles Gate West. We're to maintain and improve levels of vehicular service in the area. With that, I, I, Dan Adams will speak to this slide, project goals. Hi, my name is Dan Adams. The initiating goal of this project was to eliminate and rebuild deficient bridge infrastructure, which improves the safety of the area. As the project team studied the site and met with local stakeholders and impacted people, we realized the project could improve pedestrian and bicycle connectivity of adjacent local roads and park systems. The project includes ADA enhancements to pedestrian accommodations and improved crossings and pathways to reconnect park systems. Additionally, we realized that the project could significantly decrease negative environmental impacts of the Boker Bridge on adjacent cultural and environmental resources. The project now also proposes to remove rampways from atop the Muddy River and Charles Gate Park and treat surface runoff from the project area through green stormwater infrastructure landscapes. Shown here is the overall plan of proposed improvements between Commonwealth Avenue to the north, the Fens Park to the south, Charles Gate West and east. Momentarily, the project team will zoom into each section of this plan articulated by the dash black rectangles in order to give a more detailed view and description of each segment of the project. These four zoom in views will focus first on the bridge itself, which is the area of the project that spans over I-90, the train tracks, and Ipswich Street. This includes the replaced vehicular bridge of the Boker overpass, the extension of Charles Gate West with a new sidewalk and a new ped bike bridge. Then we will focus on what is identified as the South approach, which are the designed improvements for vehicular, pedestrian, and bicycle connections at the intersection of Boylston Street, the Boker overpass, and the Fens Park. Then we will focus on the North approach, which is the South Field area of Charles Gate Park. The North approach includes the new extension of Charles Gate West, the new accessible path from the Ped Bike Bridge over I-90 down to Commonwealth Avenue, the new underpass to Newbury Street, and removal of the down ramp over the Muddy River. Finally, we will zoom in on the Commonwealth Avenue end of the project area to focus on the reconfigured intersections of Charles Gate East and West with Commonwealth Avenue including new crosswalks that connect the Commonwealth Avenue Mall block to Charles Gate Park and the rest of the mall. Thank you, Dan. This slide uh, depicts the existing condition of the bridge. The patchwork of repairs shown here demonstrates that the deck is in poor condition. The bridge piers are deteriorating. Bridge, the bridge superstructure needs to be replaced and the sidewalks are narrow and non-compliant. This slide depicts the proposed design, the Boker overpass superstructure replacement to the east and the widening portion that includes the shared use path shown here in dark orange 
with landscape features. Also seen here is the Chalice Gate West Roadway and the pedestrian only sidewalk shown in yellow. This slide is a rendering of the shared use path entryway and how it may appear in the future looking north. This slide is a rendering of the shared use path and how it may appear in the future looking south. This slide depicts the existing Boker overpass and Boylston Street intersection. The intersection currently has outdated traffic signal equipment and awkward pedestrian crossings. This slide shows the proposed design for the Boker overpass and Boylston Street intersection. It provides connectivity and accessibility for pedestrians and bicyclists to and from the parklands. This slide shows the existing condition as a south field of Charles Gate Park. The off-ramp is structurally deficient, <clears throat> excuse me, and there are river and parkland disturbances. It also shows that there are there is no connectivity to the parkland. Parkland, excuse me. <clears throat> this slide depicts the proposed design for the north approach. We, we have here Charles Gate East Ramp has been removed and relocated adjacent to the Charles Gate West Ramp. As a result, more parkland is introduced and there's pedestrian and bicyclist connectivity. Shown in yellow is a pedestrian only sidewalk. Pedestrians will have the ability of walking eastward through an underpass to the Charles Gate Park. Pedestrians will also have the ability to head west to Newberry Street. As I just mentioned, this image shows the intersection of Charles Gate West and Newberry Street, where a pedestrian underpass has been designed to provide access to the south field of Charles Gate Park. Access can be gained through both a stairway and a ramp. Additionally, the ramp and stairway allow pedestrians to go upwards from Newberry Street and Charles Gate Park and cross over the bridge to head towards the Fens area. One of the goals of this design is to leave, the, to, to leave adequate area for tree planting. This slide shows the existing condition of the Commonwealth Avenue, of, excuse me, of Commonwealth Avenue. Currently the sidewalks are narrow and the crosswalks are missing. There is no park access to the Commonwealth Avenue mall. This slide shows a proposed design for Commonwealth Avenue. The intersection of Charles Gate West and Charles Gate East at Commonwealth Avenue will be reconstructed. The sidewalks will be ADA compliant, <coughs> excuse me, and the crosswalks will be provided. We have prepared Mr. two. Mr. Speak to oh. this. Thank you, Owen. We have prepared two before and after views of the design. This view is looking south at the south field of Charles Gate Park and the fence beyond. You'll notice in this view the on-off ramps on both sides of the Boker overpass with the off-ramp located above the Muddy River, the narrow sidewalks on either side of the on-off ramps, and the lack of crosswalks to the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. In this proposed design, you'll notice that the down-ramp from the Boker Bridge has been removed from above the Muddy River, and the traffic is now located on a two-way extension of Charles Gate West. Charles Gate West now extends over I-90, the MBTA CSX railway lines, and Ipswich Street on a dedicated bridge. There is also now a dedicated ped bike corridor between Charles Gate West and the Boker Bridge that ramps down to Commonwealth Avenue. And you can barely make out at the bottom of the screen that there are new crosswalks to the Comav Mall block. On the west side of Charles Gate West, you can see the sidewalk that connects down to Newbury Street through a switchback ramp. This image reverses the view and now looks towards the north, with the fens at your back and the Charles River in the distance at the top of the image. In this existing condition, you can see the on-off ramps from the Boker peeling off to the west and east, with the east side off-ramp located immediately over the Muddy River. You can see the narrow sidewalks on either side of the bridge and ramps. You can also see that the bridge has no connection to the Charles Gate Park South Field for pedestrians. Instead, 
As one passes over the bridge and down the sidewalk, a pedestrian bypasses Charles Gate Park. In this proposed condition, you can see how the muddy river is exposed by removing the down ramp. The relocation of that vehicular traffic onto the two-way extension of Charles Gate West. The creation of a new 16-foot wide multimodal corridor through the middle of the bridges. This lo location positions walkers and cyclists so they touch down in Charles Gate Park and don't bypass the park as they currently do. Adjacent to the multimodal path is a strip of landscape planting to help continue the feeling of being in the emerald necklace across the bridge. I will now turn it over to Scott Carpenter. Thank you, Dan. Um, okay, so what alternatives were considered to uh, restore this structure that's over the I-90 turn, uh, I-90 Massachusetts Turnpike Corridor? Um, we considered several different ways to repair or replace this portion of the existing overpass bridge. Uh, the first alternative uh, that was considered was strictly a superstructure replacement using rapid bridge construction techniques. Um, it would have involved traffic shutdown weekends that would have significantly significantly impacted traffic during those times, both underneath on I-90, uh, the railroad, and on Ipswich Street, as well as up above on the Boker Overpass Bridge itself. Um, the challenges with traffic accommodation during the shutdown weekends and the ability to work around existing utilities that exist on the bridge suggested uh, some alternative approaches to the project be investigated and studied. For the sec so for the second alternative, we asked the question, can we install a temporary bridge just to the west to be able to handle some vehicular traffic during construction and also accommodate the existing utilities? Um, the answer was yes, there is room for this. This alternative would allow the existing bridge superstructure to be replaced in one or two stages, and then the temporary bridge would be removed. This could work, but could we do better? That was the question. So building off of the temporary bridge alternative, we asked ourselves, what if, what if we made this temporary bridge permanent instead? Would that allow us to reorganize the existing infrastructure by shifting around some traffic? Could we do it in a way that would consolidate the roadways and permanently remove the existing down ramp structure that goes over the muddy river? After further investigation, yes, this is an alternative that would work. The new portion of the widened new bridge would accommodate the relocation of the existing utilities that are on the existing bridge and would also serve as a temporary traffic relief during the construction. Um, then the bridge would be kept as a permanent two-way facility for all modes of traffic, including bicycles and pedestrians connecting Commonwealth Avenue to Boylston Street and the associated parks. The permanent adjacent bridge alternative was selected for further design, further development and design. We reviewed other projects in the area and were able to incorporate additional features that would make the project compatible with the other planned improvements. These include widening of the pathways, adding a green strip onto the bridge and providing additional and enhanced park connections. This is, so this is the proposed alternative that was selected to advance and what we have been presenting here tonight. It provides new pathway connections, a nice widened bridge, which is new infrastructure, rehabilitated existing infrastructure and removal of some infrastructure that's been environmentally impactful for over 60 years now. For the specifics of the design concept at the widened new bridge structure to the west, shown here on the left side of the screen, there are three 11 foot lanes two uh, through lanes, one's northbound, one's southbound, and with the center uh, lane uh, being a left turn, um, being a left turn lane. The roadway will also have two foot wide shoulders. On the west side, uh, as Dan and Alwyn mentioned earlier, we'll have the six, uh, a six foot wide sidewalk that's separated from vehicles. And on the east side of that, also separated from vehicles is the 16 foot wide pathway with a landscaping strip that can accommodate small trees and bushes. The main Boker overpass structure will be essentially the same footprint of what's out there today, except the narrow existing sidewalks would not be replaced as they would be expanded and relocated over to the west side on the new widened structure. The lane configuration on the Boker overpass main structure 
will be two through lanes northbound and two through lanes southbound, leading to and from Sturro Drive with additional turn lanes for the southbound traffic approaching the traffic signal at the Boylston Street intersection. This is similar to what's out there today. The lane widths here again would be 11 feet wide with uh, two foot shoulders uh, would be provided on both sides of the roadway. The Commonwealth Avenue lane configuration would be the same um, as existing, except that a buffer will be added to the bike lane that's out there today by renewing the by renewing the pavement markings. Missing crosswalks will be added to the intersections and the traffic signals will be upgraded. The pathways throughout the project will be ADA compliant, including the new connection between Newberry Street West and the Charles Gate Park. A modernized intersection will be provided at the Boylston Street uh, at Boylston Street with the added with an added crosswalk on the north leg of the intersection that's missing today. The Boylston Street intersection will not prohibit future bike lanes um, on Boylston Street, and we are working with the City of Boston and the DCR to collaborate on potential future enhancements for Boylston Street within and beyond the project limits for uh, the future vision of the area around uh, the Back Bay fence. Road, roadway stormwater runoff for new and reconstructed roadways and pathways will be conveyed into bioretention retention basins for improvements to the Muddy River's water quality. So what that all means, long-term permanent impacts um, for the roadways, what we have is a, the existing infrastructure is gonna be shifted and consolidated to improve uh, intersection safety. And there will be, uh, there'll be no added or reduced vehicular access and no increase in the vehicular traffic capacity or, or number, number of through lanes um, through the project area. The park For the parklands, we're gonna have enhanced access, parkland improvements and upgrades to the water quality and new shared use pathways connecting the surrounding parks and parklands. Uh, the lighting will be upgraded throughout the project limits and for I-90, the railroad and Ipswich Street down below, there will be no permanent impacts and the vertical impact, uh, sorry, the vertical clearance to the underside of the bridge structures will be increased from what's out there today. So how will road users, bicyclists and pedestrians be impacted during the project? Um, I'm gonna go through a step-by-step -step of the staging that's being considered just to show how the project could be built in a staged manner while keeping the, keeping the traffic moving. But before I do that, I'd like to just talk in general terms about how the road users, bicyclists, and pedestrians will be impacted during the construction. For, for road users, traffic over the bridge would be, would be maintained throughout construction with limited uh, temp temporary nighttime closures for heavy demolition and heavy construction activities. Drivers on I-90 can anticipate temporary lane closures and rolling roadblocks for crane mobilization and during beam, beam removal and beam erection operations. For Ipswich Street, we can anticipate par some parking restrictions, some lane shifts, and some nighttime roadway closures, but otherwise Ipswich, Ipswich Street will remain open uh, for, uh, for roadway users. Um, for the railroad, the impacts, impacts are anticipated to be limited to non-revenue MBTA hours. What that means is that that would be at night when the commuter rail schedule is finished for the day and before it starts up in the morning. Pedestrians uh, during construction will keep both existing sidewalks open for as long as we can up until the point where one will end up closing and pedestrians will cross to the other open the other open sidewalk on the other side. Signage will be installed to navigate through the project area. For cyclists, during construction, cyclists will, will be permitted to travel through the area as they normally would today, either riding on the roadway or walking their bikes on the sidewalk. MassDOT and the contractor will keep the public informed throughout the project of upcoming and ongoing construction activities, scheduled nighttime lane and roadway closures, and potential, any potential anticipated traffic impacts. So this, uh, this is a, a video that goes through step-by-step -step of the anticipated construction phasing. This is a way that the, uh, this is a way to build the project. Um, just want to note that the contractor will coordinate and collaborate with MassDOT's District 6 office as their means and methods will dictate the actual construction activities and sequence. Um, but all multiple lane closures 
or roadway closures are expected to be during nighttime hours, uh, like is uh, like like shown here. So here's existing. The first stage, we start working on the abutments on the outside of the corridor. At night, we'll do some work next to the railroad. Um, after that's ready, we'll start putting some beams in over Ipswich Street and the railroad, marching our way across the corridor. The crane would be positioned on I-90 at night to put some more beams in. This is for the first portion of the new structure that's going in. Additional night work. Then the deck will go on a new portion of the bridge. That will get prepped for traffic. As soon as that's ready, we will have traffic on the new portion of the roadway. That will allow some demolition of the existing structure um, to complete the beam installations of the new widened bridge. That would all be happening at night, marching our way across in a similar fashion. The deck would be finished off. At that point, the roadway can handle two-way traffic and we can start biting into the superstructure of the existing bridge. That will be done half and half. Demolition will work its way across the corridor at night. Uh, the down ramp would come down, come down, that's over the muddy river. The beams would be placed on the first half of the uh, existing structure. After those are installed, kick start this again. Um, the deck would go on here, some pavements some pavement markings. Then we're able to flip traffic onto the reconstructed portion of the existing bridge and we can begin demolition of the second half of the existing uh, Volker overpass structure. That would happen in the same fashion, marching, marching uh, its way across the corridor. Nighttime, we'll have some beams being installed. Same thing over I-90. And the last portion of the beams would be placed after those are there. Uh, and in place, the deck can uh, be installed, pavement, final pavement markings, and the project is uh, open for business here. So I think that goes through the staging. Alwyn, uh, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Scott. Once again, just a reminder, what Scott just showed or demonstrated was the suggested sequence of construction. In terms of our next steps, the project is scheduled to be advertised in August of 2024. After this, the bidding process begins. The lowest qualified bidder is selected. The award process is anticipated for the winter of 2024. We are currently targeting an NTP or notice to proceed to be issued in the spring of 2025. Construction is projected to begin in the summer of 2025. Currently, we're anticipating construction to be completed in 2028. How can you reach the project team? Submit written comments to our chief engineer, that's Carrie Lavalier, uh, PE, chief engineer, MassDOT, 10 Park Plaza, Boston, Massachusetts. The zip code is 02116. Uh, please note, there is a typo here. Um, oh, the typo was corrected. Forgive me. Uh, attention, major projects. Project file number 606496. Submit email comments to, that's massdot, major projects, at dot.state.ma.us. For project information, visit the mass.highway event website. And that address is the following. That's https colon backslash backslash www.mass.gov backslash ORGS backslash Massachusetts dash department dash of dash transportation backslash events or use the QR code that's being shown on this slide. With that said, we appreciate all of you for attending this public hearing. We encourage you to put your comments in writing so that we can thoughtfully respond to each one of your comments. The Q&A for this uh, pr project is about to commence. 
We would like to provide an equitable time for all participants. Again, please submit your comments in writing within 10 business days of this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, let's advance to the next slide. Uh, let's, before we continue on this slide, uh, I forgot to launch a poll just to make sure that we have the appropriate lab service in terms of language interpretation to our general public. Um, I will now launch the poll. Uh, please tell me if you are attending this uh, via the English, Cantonese, Spanish, Mandarin, or Arabic. And while you guys are working on that poll, I will go through the basics once again uh, for Zoom participation uh, for this webinar. Uh, as you already know, that on the bottom of your screen, you see that raise hand icon. Um, raise your hand. I see that a couple of people have already done so. Um, we can then um, unmute yourself and then you can provide verbal questions and comments. If you are shy about it, you can then submit your questions and comments via the QA button. And I see that there are a few uh, questions already uh, on the docket for us. Please state your name and your affiliation before your question. Uh, it will help us to, um, address you properly. In addition to that, I see that there are about 114 people uh, in attendance today. So please, please limit your questions to one question or comment at a time, limiting about like two minutes, just so that we can allow other people to participate. Um, and if you are dialing in by uh, phone, please, uh, you can hit the star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute yourself. Once again, I did put up a survey. So after this meeting, once you close out Zoom, it will automatically pop up. Uh, completing the survey will help us understand your experience a lot more and making future meeting more productive. And so with that being said, I we usually would like to give this time to elected officials first to, um, you know, make the comments and state uh, the questions. So with that, I see that rep a state representative Jay Livingstone. Uh, I believe you can unmute yourself. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for this presentation. I'm very excited uh, that MassDOT has greatly improved the, this design, um, especially off uh, an initial thought of just doing a, a, a replacement of the existing infrastructure. This design, I think, if it goes forward, will be a great improvement for pedestrians, bicyclists, as well as motorists. And also, um, I don't think it was highlighted, but I noticed the uh, rain gardens um, that will improve uh, the environment uh, as less pollution will get into the muddy river from this roadway. I, I support this and I'm sure, but I'm also here to listen to other people's comments um, on any ways that this can be improved. And, and I think when the, the two MassDOT projects, this one as well as the one on the other side of ComAV are finished along with some of the city projects, this area will be transformed for the better. Um, I've worked with a lot of the, with MassDOT and, and all the advocacy groups um, on this for a, a number of years along with Senator Brownsberger. And it's great to see the first part of our, of the revisioning of Charles Gate um, be put to paper and with a start to go forward. So I'll keep working to fully realize the community's vision, but um, I'm really here to to hear what everyone else has to say. So thank you, MassDOT, and uh, thanks to everyone else for participating. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, uh, I know this is out of the ordinary. This, um, there is someone from the Charles Gate Alliance who would like to make a comment. It's Margaret O'Corny. I am so sorry if, if I mispronounce your last name there. Margaret, you be able to unmute yourself. Margaret? Um, I think while Margaret figures this out, it looks like Anthony Bayes put in the Q&A that they're here for Councillor Durkin. Maybe you can okay. give um, Anthony 
the option to unmute the microphone. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Okay, Anthony. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, the presentation. Um, I'm here um, as the liaison to the back bay and also uh, handle transportation for District 8 City Councilor Sharon Durkin. Um, just want to thank MassDOT again for, you know, the great presentation. I was I actually worked previously with Councilor Bach as well. So um, privy to some of the previous iterations of this project and really happy to see it um, evolve into something a lot more than just, as Rep Livingstone said, just replacing existing infrastructure, but actually making an effort to um, accommodate pedestrians, um, people with, you know, accessibility issues. So um, really excited just to see all of this um, packaged into that. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'm here on behalf. She was she was here earlier, so she did see some of the um, some of the slides. So Councillor Durkin is definitely paying attention, and um, really look forward to hearing um, what other others have to say um, that you know this um, project will have a great impact on. Um, and then just one question from me is: um, we I did see that in the um, outline of what what the project aims to do. There was kind of some blue checkered lines of um, maybe responsibilities that other departments or maybe even the uh, city of Boston has on maybe making future um, improvements. Just would like to know if uh, MassDOT is um, letting us, letting us, I say us, the city, know, um, you know, where we can make improvements. Cause I know one of the discussed um, things that we would like to see at the city level was connecting Newberry street to the other side of Newberry street. Um, through maybe a bridge um, under the overpass. Um, so obviously that's not included in this project, but would love to know if that's something that, um, you know, the city can help out again. But no, again, thank you so much because um, really, really nice looking project. Thank you. Appreciate it. And the, the bridge you just mentioned, um, we are considering that for a future project and that's being talked through uh, as we speak. But thank you very much for your comments. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so with that, I don't see any other elected officials unless I missed it. I'm going to try Margaret again. Margaret? Am, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Yay. Ah, a miracle. Thank you. It is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm on an iPad that hates me. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm really speaking for two two groups with two hats. My first hat is for the Friends of the Public Garden as chair of the Commonwealth Avenue Mall Committee, which has had the care of this block of Commonwealth Avenue for the last 50 years. And I just want to say that we are absolutely thrilled that there will finally be a way to get to this block, which has really been an island unto itself, not safely traversed. It's sort of been a death defying um, feat to try and get to that block of the mall. So these new pedestrian crosswalks are fantastic. They will make it safer for pedestrians and bicyclists to get into that block of the mall, which we would love to have happen and also traverse it and make the connectivity to, the, to what the rest of this project is going to um, uh, achieve. Um, as just a footnote, when when the when the down ramp comes off at the corner of Commonwealth Avenue and Charles Gate East, there will be land there that is not available now. And I hope at some point you all might consider making that um, hospitable, either with benches or landscaping or trees or some um, small pocket park sort of thing in that area. My other hat is as a member of the Charles Gate Alliance board, and I mostly want to speak as a tree person. And I know that in the process of doing this project, there are going to be the loss, the absolutely necessary loss of some mature large trees. And we think this will probably happen along the pike where there are a bunch of volunteer trees at Charles Gate West. There are some other trees in front of the retaining wall on Charles Gate West, and there may be some trees along the, um, the riverway that will be lost. And we would hope that you would be willing to, we know you are aware of this and how much importance this has to the community as, as well as the city in terms of the maintenance of the tree canopy, 
that we can figure out some way to replace what is lost um, so that there is an, an, a zero effect of um, taking down these mature trees. There's gotta be some metric, whether it's um, a caliper, I mean, have the caliper of trees that are lost, we would plant enough trees that would replace that caliper or some, something that's not to be done in this discussion tonight, but we would certainly hope that you would be willing to talk to us about that. But otherwise we think this is gonna be a just absolutely fantastic um, improvement and everybody will benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why don't we uh, advance back a slide or two, just so that we can get back to how to reach us. Just wanna make sure that the addresses are here on the screen so people can actually get access to that. And I did um, copy and paste the email address onto the chat that people can get access to at the bottom of your screen. And so uh, please, with that being said, I will hand it over to Kayla who will um, do the questions and then I will address the raise hands and just to get everybody caught up, there's about like 107 people on the docket. So please um, limit your questions to one, uh, questions and comments and limit it to about two minutes at a time. So Kayla? Sure, yeah, so I'll read some of the written questions and then we'll answer them and then we'll go back to hands. We'll sort of go back and forth, um, focusing on people who haven't asked a question yet. So the first question in the queue is actually a comment, but I'll read it out loud so that everyone can hear it. This is from Marie um, Kukuda. I'm leaving this call, but want to voice my extreme disappointment given that Fenway Civic Association met with Landing Studio at the 10% design to express the concern with the pedestrian and bike conflicts at the south side of Boylston Street, where there is heavy pedestrian use, especially during game events and gardening season. We expressly asked that the north side of Boylston Street Bridge be revisioned as the crossing for bicycles capitalizing on the use of DCR carriage lanes to connect cyclists from West Fenway to downtown and allowing city, DCR, and DOT goals to work together. I will submit my comments separately within the 10-day period, Marie. So if no one from the project team would like to respond to that for the people in the audience, we will move on. Okay. Um, Dan, could you respond to that just briefly? Sure. I think, as Scott stated in the presentation, we are we and all. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. We are aware of that uh, interest and studies that are going on elsewhere on the either ends of Boylston Street, yes. and are you know engaged in conversations with both DCR and City of Boston on considering how that bike infrastructure could be uh, accommodated. And as Scott said, certainly not precluded, uh, such that as that infrastructure. Um, is sorted by the city and DCR, it can be incorporated into this project. So uh, I think it's a bit of a matter of working collectively together to figure out what a plan for that region is. And we are well aware of that uh, interest. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dan. And then also just for the sake of everyone in interpretation channels or who isn't tracking the answered questions, I did wanna acknowledge there have been questions asked um, that we've answered in writing with, will this meeting be recorded? It, it is being recorded. And then there was a question about whether or not the slides will be on the website after the hearing. Um, and the answer to that was yes, the website will host the presentation once it's made web accessible. Just wanted to make sure that I said those out loud. Thank All right, you. moving, yep, no problem. Moving on to the next question from George Lewis. Will the parking on Charles Gate East at Newberry Street be eliminated? Hoping so. Alan, I can take that one. Oh, okay. Um, the parking uh, on either side of the corridor, the, the park corridor, so Charles Gate, the east side of Charles Gate East and the west side of Charles Gate West, um, is th that those areas are, are outside of our project limits. So there's no planned changes with this, uh, with this project. Thank you, Scott. Next question is from Christian Milneal. 
the question reads, who are the others mentioned in the blue by others text on this map? So there was probably a concept that had by others in blue. Someone could explain what that means. Scott, I'd be happy to address that. Um, uh, yeah, sure. The, the, the information represented in blue uh, sort of illustrates projects that we are aware of happening and planned in the immediate vicinity of uh, our work area. And in consideration of those, we're trying to be conscientious and um, tie into those systems so that if there's pathways or connections that are planned in the near future, we're effectively calibrating this project to um, fit well with those in the future. So what's highlighted in blue is those planned projects and ensuring that this project accommodates those as they roll out in the coming years. So just to refresh the, uh, everyone's uh, mind, if we can advance to that slide, which that has the blue by others, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna get a little bit of help on the visual that you are describing. And is this a slide? Yes. So for example, the Commonwealth Avenue mall block that Margaret Picorni mentioned earlier, there are currently plans being developed by the Charles Gate Alliance, Emerald Necklace Conservancy and Esplanade Association to reconfigure that block. And uh, this project, for example, as was mentioned, is creating the crosswalks that connect to that block uh, in anticipation for setting the stage for those eventual improvements on the mall, as an example. Great, thank you. Thank you, super helpful. Uh, the next question is from Ruth Von Senor. Probably said that wrong, sorry, Ruth. Ruth asks, um, please clarify the vertical profile of the stone dust connection east-west to connect both sides of Newberry Street. Um, so the vertical alignment of that path is still under development. Um, it's going to require some regrading of the uh, park that's out there today in order to have a pathway that's uh, ADA compliant. Um, it's not uh, it's not fully designed yet, but it will be within the uh, parameters of what uh, what's required for an ADA compliant pathway. Thank you. And then I think we'll read one more written question and then return to some of the hands. And so Suzanne Haywood asks, um, please, will will there be pedestrian access to Commonwealth Avenue? And then I guess there's a second question tucked in here. Uh, please tell the layman's definition for how is the flow going to change? I think it was very helpful when the plan was on the, the screen. If that could maybe be returned. Yeah. I think the answer is yes. As was previously identified, there the Commonwealth Avenue block that is between Charles Gate East, Charles Gate West, and the two uh, directions of Commonwealth Avenue. That block is currently uh, inaccessible in that there are no crosswalks and no curb cuts uh, and no signals that would allow a pedestrian to connect to that portion of the block. This project uh, connects um, from the south, so the south side of Commonwealth Avenue, to that block, such that someone coming over uh, the new bridge infrastructure can ramp down to Commonwealth Avenue and continue directly over to the block. Then we can also see in uh, this illustration is that then there will be crosswalks to the east and west, allowing for the continued movement through the mall. So each of those two intersections, the intersections of Charles Gate East with Commonwealth Avenue and Charles Gate West with Commonwealth Avenue, will have crosswalks at all four sides of those intersections, allowing for full pedestrian circulation. Awesome, thank you. And then I did lie, I missed the first question that was asked in the chat. So I'm gonna read that one aloud and then we will go to the hands. So um, George Lewis asked, how much is this going to cost? When will it commence? And when will it be 100% completed? So the cost is currently at 90 million. That's 80% uh, federally funded. 20% of that is funded by the Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts. Um, we're currently projecting 
it to be uh, constructed or begin the NTP notice to proceed is uh, winter of 2024 and 25. And we're to uh, begin construction in the summer of 25, 2025. It's right now we're estimating it's going to take three to three and a half years to complete. So we're targeting 2028, the year of 2028. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the raise hand now. Um, I'm going to go try to go through as much as we can. I did uh, open up the Q&A so that everyone can actually see the questions um, that had been posted by other people. Um, so I will have here on the docket is Ali Barian. I am so, I apologize for mispronouncing your last name, but you can unmute yourself if you can. Hi, thank you so much. Can you all hear me? Yes, I can. Can you pronounce your last name again? Yes, Badrigian. Badrigian, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm the Director of Projects and Planning at the Esplanade Association. I have a comment to read in on behalf of the association, and I'll try to keep it to two minutes. First, we thank the project team for their proposed, which makes transformational transportation improvements while being respectful of parkland. Not only will these improvements create sorely needed connections to a revitalized Charles Gate Park, they will set the stage for the forthcoming Department of Transportation project to realign Storrow Drive north of Beacon Street. That project, number 606728, will also see the daylighting of the Muddy River and its reconnection to the Charles River, as well as the restoration of today's trapped, unusable public land to the DCR Charles River Esplanade. And it restores Olmsted's vision of a connected Charles Gate Emerald Necklace and Charles River Park system. While tonight's meeting is rightfully focused on the Boker Bridge project, we wish to also highlight our request for two project features for MassDOT project number 606728, which connects directly to the Pike Bridge superstructure of tonight's presentation. First, to please configure the Storrow Drive westbound exit to Fenway Kenmore so that it restores Esplanade Parkland immediately adjacent to the Charles River. We ask that MassDOT continue to evaluate the design of this exit ramp to move it away from the Charles River by locating all Storrow Drive travel lanes through span one of the Massachusetts Avenue Bridge, including these westbound exit lanes, which connect to the bridge superstructure of tonight's hearing. Locating all travel lanes through span one would provide a unified waterfront with 10 new, 10 new acres of DCR parkland on the Esplanade, extending the park by 65 feet at its narrowest pinch point. Our second request is that MassDOT continues to consider new ad grade connections for bicycles and pedestrians as they advance their superstructure improvements towards the Charles River. Putting all travel lanes of Storrow Drive under span one of the Massachusetts Avenue Bridge would allow these direct at grade connections between the Esplanade and the bridge from both the northbound and southbound lanes, from the Fenway and from Cambridge. This connects two of the most actively used green transportation corridors in Massachusetts. In fact, we've seen over 600,000 Esplanade entries from the current connection on the northbound side of Mass Ave just since June 1st. While project number 606728 currently has so much to like, as does tonight's project, we ask for consideration of these comments at the point where these two projects meet on the Boker overpass. We look forward to continuing to work with MassDOT, DCR, and our regional park friends. Thank you for your time this evening and the incredible work by the project team. Thank you, Ali. Um, may I ask that you will submit that comment uh, via the email uh, address that you see on the screen earlier, so, so that we can have it on record as well? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I move down the list of uh, Caroline. I am um, Caroline Weaves. I think you can unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for giving the public a chance to speak. It's always so good to have the public involved in these things. The Muddy Water Initiative that works on cleaning up the Muddy River right underneath the project area that was discussed tonight is very heartened by the idea that there is so much attention being held, being paid to the stormwater uh, uh, mediation that comes off the bridge. Um, we also, however, would like to ask, during the construction and the demolition, are there measures in place to make sure that the Muddy River is not more compromised than it already is? Will there be accommodations for parking, for the trucks, for the materials that will be flying so that both the human and the um, wildlife uh, uh, users of the Muddy River will not be affected and so that the river can continue in 
granted its its impacted state, but nonetheless not be further uh, harmed by what's going on above it. And again, we're very appreciative of the uh, bioretention, the bioswales, and the attention to stormwater coming off. We also would like to just mention uh, if any permeable surfaces could be used, that's another way that we have of helping our muddy river. Thank you again. Okay. Scott, did you want to address your comment? Um, I, yeah, I, the answer is, is yes. Um, uh, all construction projects uh, and the, uh, the rules that go with them, the contractors have to kind of keep a tidy project together following the uh, rules and regulations around the stormwater. Um, given that this is a sensitive area along the Muddy River, that will definitely be uh, highlighted in the contract documents and uh, overseen by the uh, the, the MassDOT staff. District and 6, yes. District 6 oversight folks to, to, to make sure all the things that you talked about uh, are are happening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hong. And then with that, I will move down to Richard. Richard, mute yourself. Okay. Um, Richard, one more time. Lower left hand corner, unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Um, right. Uh, representing, oh, and I'll try to lower my hand now. Um, <laughs> no worries. I'll take care of that for you. Uh, the the co-owner for uh, 20 Charles Gate West, the building known as Our Lady's Guild House, um, we would really need probably a separate meeting with some of the project people to understand okay. the impacts um, on our building. Um, we only recently closed on it. We want to turn it into affordable housing. It'll be a long process, uh, but we need to know things about impacts of your construction, uh, you know, the lay down areas, the noise, the hours of operation. And also it's hard to tell from the drawings if any of the new structure uh, comes further over the street or would impact the building. Uh, or the pedestrians that it would seem, and I, I have to take my hat off to all of the folks who put in work on this so far, a tremendous, tremendous improvement. <laughs> Just because I, I, everybody knows trying to get across that thing is a mess, no matter who you are, driving, pedestrian, biking, it's just a disaster. So hats off to all concerns, but we just want to make sure that we're in the mix when you uh, go through this a little bit further and we get a better handle on what that will construction will look like. I don't know if you can put up a, the one of the slides that shows uh, a little bit better the the construction process there. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go to that slide? Is that possible? Um, did he say he was from did you say you were from 20 Charles Gate West? Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. The, uh, Fenway CDC and the Planning Office of Urban Affairs uh, mm -hmm. only recently closed on the property. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's been a, a woman's a single room occupancy. Um, it'll eventually have to be rehabbed significantly because it's a uh, a very old structure that does not come anywhere close to ADA, but that's a process that will take a couple of years. And so the timelines for our project and yours seem to uh, possibly be at the same time. Okay. So, you know, we, we really yes. need to sit down with you guys and figure out how this is going to work. Sure. Uh, yeah, we'd be delighted to meet with you. Um, your contact information, I, I think I, we did provide the... Uh, the email address where you can contact us. And uh, yeah, if you can uh, pr uh, respond to that email address for, and provide this comment, I'll, I'll try to arrange a meeting with you and whoever else you, you'd like to invite to the meeting. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put my uh, my email in the Q&A or wherever you can see it. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, and then I'm going to move on to Karen. Karen? Hello. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Um, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to have the meeting, get the this uh, feedback from everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Monty Brodick. I'm president of the nonprofit, the Emerald Necklace Conservancy. We work in coordination with um, over 20 groups up and down the Emerald Necklace um, and work to support um, the city of Boston, Parks Department, the town of Brookline, Parks and DCR, which is the State Transportation Agency, to best uh, support and better support, better fund our wonderful uh, parks that need all the love that we can give them, and our transportation corridors, which this uh, this connects to. Uh, I really want to commend um, the leadership that uh, the state and the federal uh, officials that have been involved in this project are showing. Um, this is a uh, tremendous uh, opportunity to take what is really a pretty terrible place for, um, I know, I'm sorry, I don't think anybody was involved with the original design, so I hope I'm not offending anyone. It's just not pleasant. It is a diff very difficult place for everyone, cars, pedestrians, uh, bicyclists, everyone, fish, probably, uh, to get through this whole area today. And um, you can see from what you see from the, the children uh, trying to get to the playground, et cetera. Uh, I know that this is, a, is, is, this is really creative. I, used, I worked for government in two other cities before here, and I know that it is not uh, easy to come up with these creative ways to bring all these things together. Uh, certainly, uh, no project is perfect. There are still things that should be refined. I'm really glad that you guys are coming out, having this conversation at 25%. So... Uh, more feedback um, can be gathered, but it's pretty amazing when the project is so well-timed, you have something that needs the investment, needs the physical investment, and you can leave it better than you found it. And I just wanna say kudos. Um, this project addresses a regional gap um, in our entire uh, transportation network. And so this is one piece, it's not everything we need, but it is a big piece and I really appreciate um, all the leadership uh, that has brought it to this time and the, the, the creativity of the team. I wanted to mention that, you know, these improvements are great, but always when these things are happening, they are a, a challenge for our neighbors and our park users and everyone. So as much as the project schedule can be consolidated to happen in a shorter period of time, I think it would be of benefit. Um, I know that, you know, there, there are probably ways to do that. I am not an expert. You people are. Um, I've seen you do some real fast things at times. So um, I, you know, if there is opportunities to do that, we have um, had this connection like this for 60 years. Before that, it was actually quite lovely and different in Olmsted's time. And I'm really excited about it being uh, much better again. Uh, I want to uh, continue um, the, the comments that Caroline Reeves and others have made about Things that you can do to improve water quality um, are always of benefit. Um, we have the Muddy River, which is the most polluted tributary to the Charles right now. And so all the benefits, all the things that I think DOT is planning based on the presentation tonight um, are going to be of value. I know and I, am to I totally uh, understand, uh, I feel like I understand many of the concerns about making sure that this connects with other improvements and other things in the area. Uh, I understand this project's completion schedule of, it sounds like 2027, 2028. Um, we, as the Conservancy and many others, uh, I hope to continue to work with DOT, DCR, BTD, B Boston Parks and Rec, and everyone to try and make those connections work um, and add the, the new things that are needed in the area to make sure we can uh, serve all users, bike, pedestrian, vehicular, uh, and others. Um, I hope there's also ways that we can think about phasing and seeing if improvements um, under the, the, the Balker overpass can support some of the future things that the Conservancy, Charles Gates Alliance and others are working towards, uh, like a, a dog park and these other things. Um, it's very exciting when these pieces of infrastructure can also lead to community co cohesion, um, much like uh, Secretary Buttigieg's um, desire for reconnecting communities, which this project has 
also submitted a, a grant for for the uh, the heart of the park. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for this to uh, be a truly uh, tremendous uh, thing for Boston, uh, the region, and nationally. Uh, the Emerald Necklace is a uh, internationally uh, regarded uh, connection, and this project would uh, further uh, create and uh, amplify that and provide access. And I really applaud that the team has managed to do that without losing uh, access uh, because a lot of times there are trade-offs. And so I really appreciate the creativity uh, to keep all of those things together. I also really appreciate there's a lot of ADA access in this project. A lot of our park users um, uh, have different mobility uh, needs and I appreciate that there's so many crosswalk uh, areas and um, other places you really you are working to do that. I hope you continue to think about that closely um, as the project moves forward. I know that grades can be um, quite uh, challenging uh, at times. I also really appreciate the um, the desire and, and the inclusion of some planting on the bridge to continue that green uh, experience. Um, I think that's just really going to be transformational. Uh, today there is something called a um, it was a big fence. It's 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 just it's not pleasant at all. So, really appreciate um, appreciate that. I'm gonna uh, end there, and I'll submit uh, other feedback online. And I really appreciate you all taking the time. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more feedback, and I appreciate all of your work. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for that comment. Um, and with that, I see that there are about 20 uh, open questions and 21, and about 91 people on uh, line in attendance right now. So I'm gonna push it over to Kayla to go through some of those Q&As uh, for that. We sure, thanks, Hung. To... Yeah, great. So there's a couple of questions about trees. Um, so I'm gonna read all of those, kind of group those together and then give the design team a chance to respond. So an anonymous attendee asks, is there any tree loss anticipated? And if so, where? I'm going to scroll down a little bit to the next one. Sorry, there's a lot of questions here. Um, Van Lawler, Lawler asks or says, this is the moment in the design process where existing mature trees should be considered. How many will be affected? And then we have an anonymous attendee who made the comment, this project's proponents promote the fallacy that mature trees can be replaced they are living beings who cannot speak for themselves. And so for $30 million, Masta is willing to kill a few. It is that simple and tragic. So those are our three tree comments and questions. Mm. Scott, can you have Alyssa Jacobs speak to that if she's available? Um, I'm also happy to I, chime go in. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> Well, you, please. I think one thing the project has been very aware of is the presence of mature trees, and we have surveyed those, located those, and to every extent possible, uh, will aim to preserve them. Um, there are some locations of uh, trees that are in direct conflict with some of the major uh, infrastructural improvements. Um, and uh, certainly understand and appreciate the comment that it is not as simple as replacing a mature tree with a uh, young and much smaller tree. Uh, I think as uh, earlier comment uh, stated, we are looking at how we can create a, a balance of how we can replace mature trees with new plantings while also achieving the uh, other infrastructural improvements um, and realignments and connections in the area. Um, uh, we do take the presence of mature trees uh, very seriously on this site. Thanks, Dan. Always a balance. So the next question from Thomas Jones. Um, Thomas says, thank you. Might we consider taking this opportunity to reinvent the intersection of the Bunker and Boylston Street so that traffic moving west can continue into the Longwood medical area and Wilson Street outbound. In my opinion, the east-west access needs to happen instead of forcing the westbound traffic to the new bridge. And then Thomas wrote, as an addendum, this suggestion would eliminate the need to use Ipswich Street as the connector for those needing to go west on Boylston Street. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you for your suggestion. Uh, we'll consider that. Thank you. All right. Um, Conrad Armstrong's question, Conrad writes, when the current overpass is being dismantled and those lanes reduced, will some of the northbound traffic be diverted to local streets? That's good. Um, yep, as, as, as part of the staging, the uh, widened new bridge to the west will be constructed first. And that is uh, going to help with the um, some of the traffic demands of the construction. As as far as uh, local streets, um, we where what we do is that we get into the the construction staging of it, and we want to run some traffic models to see how things would work. And uh, we do that in the next design phase. Um, but to, to answer your question, I some some vehicles will divert to some different streets and some different corridors and also regionally take some some different routes around and away from the entire area. Um, as far as the specifics, uh, we don't have, uh, I, I, I can't answer that. Um, but but we, do, uh, we, we do work through all of those questions as we uh, get into final design and, and uh, complete our, our, our design before it goes out to construction. Thank you, Scott. The next question is from Charles Martel. Charles writes, Fenway Park events create significant traffic. What do you anticipate will happen with those trying to reach Back Bay? I, I think that question's probably specific to during construction, which goes along with the uh, previous question too. I think the same response applies. Jessica, could you answer that as well? Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, I, well, Scott just touched on what would happen during construction. In the final condition, um, you know, folks will still be able to turn onto the new ramp. Um, so today, if you're traveling west on Boylston, you would turn right to head into Back Bay down to Calm Ave. Um, in the future, you would just go straight through the intersection to the new ramp and then turn right onto Calm Ave. Um, you know, we certainly expect delays during Fenway events, um, you know, they happen now and we would expect that to continue. Um, we're doing everything that we can to mitigate, you know, delays for folks driving through the traffic signals. Thank you. The next question may be similar, but I'll uh, read it in case there's anything to add or, or it's not the same and I'm missing it. An anonymous attendee writes, the intersection on Boylston particularly for vehicles heading north down the new ramp to the back bay looks like a nightmare. How is that traffic going to be managed? That's a little different. I think that would be generally the same. Um, so the traffic will, you know, you'll be able to turn left or go through onto the new ramp to access Calm Ave. Um, you know, whereas today, depending on your leg, you might be going through or turning right. Um, down the other ramp. And, you know, one of the benefits of the new connection is, you know, you won't be mixed on that new ramp with, uh, you know, trying to weave with folks getting onto Storo Drive. Um, and then you will be, you know, turning right through Calm Ave. So you'll be having to, you know, go through one additional intersection on Calm Ave. Um, so there'll probably be, you know, some impacts to travel time there. Um, but otherwise, you know, the traffic will be managed similar to how it is today um, and we'll be timing signals to try to manage traffic cues to the best of our ability. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so we have a couple of questions about construction activities. So I think I'm going to um, group these together again. So for starters, Jennifer Sampson, Jennifer writes, what time will the nighttime construction take place? Will it be overnight as in 11 p.m. to 5 a.m.? The, the exact time periods uh, to be determined, it will be depending on which portion of the uh, project they're working on, the railroad uh, times and restrictions and availability times to work are slightly different than what's on the Mass Pike. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, yes, yes, they'll be overnight um, for some of the... Uh, the larger activities where large crane need to be placed. Um, and uh, 
if a, a bigger footprint is needed for some temporary, you know, short term work. Perfect. Thanks. Scott. I believe there will also be restrictions for events in the area as well on when they can commence work for the evening. Sporting events, thank you, Joe. Yeah, etc. Yep, thank you. Um, and then uh, similarly, and we've probably touched on this, but just one more time, um, is there any noise restriction you need to keep the decibels under at that time of night? And this person wrote, this is still Jennifer, this will all be taking place right under my bedroom window, already used to overnight construction on Route 90, but this will be much closer to my window. Thanks. And before we answer about noise, um, there was also another question from the Mount of attendees. Is there any prediction about noise intensity and radius during the expected three years of construction? It looks like noise could be significant during many nights. Um, during some of the night work, yes, uh, noise, there will be some noise associated with the construction. The bulk of the work is going to uh, happen during the day. Contractors typically do like to work during the day if they can. Um, some of the some of the work that will happen at night is, like I said, some of the the beam placements with the um, uh, with the use of cranes um, and the beam removals. Thanks, Scott. So I think we chipped away at maybe half the questions we had open, maybe a bit more. Um, so Hung, if that makes sense to go to the next raised hand before going back to written questions. Great. Thank you. Um, Ruth, do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. Sorry, I don't have another question. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Back to you, Kayla. All right. We'll just... Make sure we lower the hand that time. Thanks, Han. Uh, so <laughs> Timothy Horn writes, where does the bicycle traffic go? I hope the connection is successful, but there is no space for bikes and pedestrians on the sidewalk leading to Park Drive. That is two-way bike traffic colliding with pedestrians in a highly used corridor. It is the missing link of this project and the Fenway Streets project. Uh, yeah, currently what's shown as the sort of red color in the plan is the dedicated multimodal path. And uh, that, as you can see, is running from the northern edge of the Fens to Commonwealth Avenue and across uh, to the mall block. Uh, we are aware that there are um, other plans in the works, both to extend that path through Charles Gate Park north towards Beacon Street and ultimately to the Esplanade. We are also aware of the sort of growing plans to try and implement uh, uh, bike infrastructure on Boylston Street as has sort of been raised. And what can be seen here is that the new crosswalks allow for connectivity of those uh, potential future lanes to tie into this project. Um, but the sort of predominant sort of major piece of new infrastructure is that as was shown before, currently bicyclists are sort of forced to be either in road going over the Boker, or as was stated, walk their bikes off uh, along the very narrow uh, sidewalks. What's shown in the red path is a new dedicated um, uh, 12 foot wide path with two foot shoulders. So 16 foot wide multimodal path through the middle of the project and uh, the reason for that sort of S curve in the path is to actually allow that to function at a, an ADA slope um, so that sort of all users can use that multimodal path. Thanks, Dan. So the next question that I see is from Kimberly Hutter. Actually, this is just a statement, but I'm going to read it. Uh, hello, I am here on behalf of Senator Brownsberger. I know he is very excited for this project and eager to hear from folks in the neighborhood. Happy to be here tonight to listen. We are happy to have you here, Kimberly. Um, the next question is from Sarah Freeman. Where will the recording be accessible to the public? It's, it's the website that I 
I provided earlier, or the uh, the hyperlink. Yeah, I know. Yeah, return to the screen right now, and you can see where it's going to be posted. So just one yeah. moment. Thanks, Thank Kelly. You. That's really helpful. All right, while you do that, next question is from um, Marco Baldessari. What does pedestrian lighting on this proposal look like? Um, it's, it's still being developed and, and designed, but we do have a graphic. Um, you could scroll back to that. Um, Taylor, can you scroll back to that? It's the kind of uh, lower level view looking at the path. Keep going backwards. A little further. No, uh, we're getting close. Uh, a little more. Here we go. So there's there's a kind of initial concept of some lighting through the project. Scott, thanks, Taylor, for going to the slides. Um, Gail Boyajan writes, there is a graceful, I believe, Richardson-designed bridge over the Muddy River where Boylston Street meets the overpass. Will this bridge be repaired and conserved? conserved? Um, impacts to this project doesn't have impacts to that bridge, just to the to the south. Um, will it be conserved? Uh, yes, it's it will remain, um, but there's no plans to repair that bridge or uh, under this project, as far as I know. I think Scott, maybe it's worth noting that this the alignment of the path that's on the screen currently essentially duplicates the original alignment that H.H. H. Richardson had uh, crossing over at the time, uh, the railroad tracks. So we are in some ways actually restoring the original path of connectivity um, uh, of the portion of the H.H. H. Richardson bridge that was uh, removed during the construction of I-90. Thank you. Right. The um, next question and comment I'll read is from Bruce Chaffee. Bruce writes, I envision a radically different design with the goal of opening air over park. And I wonder whether you considered if and A, remove all of the central buffer overpass over Comav and the park area. B, instead split northbound from Boylston over Ipswich the land at southern end of Charles Gate East, where the round park structures are, route traffic either on uh, the surface existing Charles Gate East or on an elevated structure over Charles Gate East, and then C, instead, route southern bound for traffic on or above Char Charles Gate West, then to the overpass that joins northbound over Ipswich Street. I, for one, could probably use the map graphic back on the screen, but that is the question if we consider any of these things during the alternatives analysis. Taylor, can you go back to the overall uh, proposed alternative? So try look at it from Um, I think we can, I, we could look into this question a little further. Um, there was been several different alternatives looked at through the years under, uh, this project and previous projects that I know of. Um, but yeah, let's look into this one further and we could probably reply, um, at a later date. Great. Thanks, Scott and Bruce, if you wanted to put your email or something in the chat so that we have it, maybe someone can uh, get back to you. So the next question we have is from Steve Wolf. Can you explain how the bioretention ponds will work? I'm curious about how or if they'll improve the quality of runoff water from the overpass. It's a huge improvement not to dump that directly into the Muddy River, 
but will the ponds be able to remove oil and other petroleum products carried off the road surface? I'm happy to speak to that, <laughs> Scott. Um, uh, as was stated, uh, of course, we're still in the design phases of the exact configuration and sort of makeup of the bioretention. But there are two areas allocated, one uh, to the south, which um, is essentially where there is an existing slip lane around the northern edge of the fens. That slip lane is now allocated to be a stormwater uh, retention and management and filtration landscape that would receive the waters that are flowing southwards uh, in the project uh, based on sort of the natural pitch of the roads. Uh, immediately to the north, there is another bioretention basin allocated, which is uh, just south of Commonwealth Avenue, which is receiving the north flowing waters. All of that water, of course, gets diverted into the bioretention uh, uh, for both um, uh, retention, filtration, and ultimate discharge into the Muddy River. Um, as noted, currently, all of that water is in a dis direct discharge configuration. So this will significantly improve the water quality of the runoff going into the Muddy River. Thank you, Dan. Okay, the next question we have is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, they write, will the area under the overpass overpasses be improved in any additional ways? Currently, it is barren, very ugly. Uh, the answer is yes, it will be improved under this project. Um, some, and then also the follow-on projects that uh, kind of we had mentioned um, we'll also enhance it more. There's been talks of some, uh, the Charles Gate Alliance, um, making some other improvements down here and turning it into, uh, I think a dog park was mentioned, uh, one of the earlier comments and things like that. So, so yes, it will be improved, uh, under this part, under this, uh, project. And it sounds like even further improvements, uh, beyond I'll add to that, Scott, that I think one of our goals in organizing the pathways to the site is really to activate the site. One of our um, key observations is that's what's known as the south field of Charles Gate Park is effectively a dead end in the city, uh, sort of abutting immediately to I-90. And so uh, it is also the case that when people cross over the Boker Bridge, they essentially pass immediately over the south field. So forcing someone to have to sort of intentionally turn around to come into uh, the south field, at which point there's nowhere for them to go. It's a dead end trap between retaining walls I-90 and the river. Uh, so one of our sort of guiding principles in this project is one, that the multimodal path now actually takes people through the south field so that as you come over the bridge, you actually land in the park. You don't bypass the park. And then with that creation of the underpass in particularly at Newbury Street, it gives a sort of way in and out. So as people are coming sort of into the South Field, they are no longer trapped in a dead end, but actually have an outlet or an inlet to the rest of the city. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so we have a comment from Dan Driscoll. Uh, so Dan writes, I recommend consideration of pedestrian mid crossings at all, I'm sorry, I'm missing that word there, at all of the four major crossings at Boylston Street intersection. Looks like two crossings have them, but all need them. These multi-lane crossings will be difficult to time and provide all users adequate safe crossing time. Mid cross islands, okay, I'm missing what the word are, respites should help. Also should consider no right on red anywhere in this intersection or see if crossing times will be even more challenging. Some of the specifics here, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get to uh, as we enter into the final design here. Um, I, Jessica, can uh, you maybe say something about the, I think we're talking about the two phase crossings versus single phase. Is, is that what that means? Yeah. Um, 
right now, I think um, three of the four crosswalks are designed to have fully compliant pedestrian refuges on them. Um, and so the one that doesn't, um, the median currently isn't wide enough to, but it's something that could be evaluated. It's certainly a long crossing. Um, the ones that don't will be timed. Um, you know, if if this continues not to have one on that fourth leg, it'll be, we'll make sure that the pedestrian timing is appropriate to allow folks, you know, safe time to cross based on the distance of the crossing. Um, and then I think the second part of the comment was about the no turn on red. And that is definitely something that we are considering um, just given the volumes of pedestrians and bikes out here, as well as some of the heavy turning movements. So appreciate your comment. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna move over to raise hand, uh, Pam. Yep, unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Um, I did have several comments and questions, but they've already been answered. So I just wanna take this opportunity to thank the DOT, Gill Engineering and Landing Studios for a really wonderful and thoughtful plan and presentation. This is amazing work and thank you very, very much. Thank you thank so you much, Pam. Ma and with that, I can read up the very last few of the comments and questions. Uh, this is from Richard. Uh, Gio Dano? I am, I am really bad with um, names, so I very much apologize. But he's wrote, uh, have to repeat, need clarifications on the impact to 20 Charles Gate West about encroachment, lay down areas, street closing, noise, etc. So I guess he's trying to get clarification on how construction is going to impact 20 Charles Gate. Yeah, I, I think Al, when you mentioned that earlier, um, we'll get, he's going to reach out for a meeting and you were yes. Yeah, yeah. we have Richard's contact information. So Great. I think Thank we're you. good on that. Yeah. About that. And lastly, uh, Kelly uh, Brilliant wrote just a comment. I appreciate all the work and thought that has gone into this and the evident improvement and the evident improvement. Uh, that said, I do think Bruce uh, Chaffee's um, idea is well worth considering. Open air over the park. I recognize a much more radical change, but may benefit generation. Thank you for your comment. So can we advance to the last slide 50? About there. If you uh, by chance uh, have any kind of comments uh, be thought of after this presentation, you can submit your comments in writing uh, with the email, uh, with the mailing address you see on the screen here with Carrie, uh, Carrie Lavelle, the uh, Chief Engineer, Mass DOT, 10 Park, Park Plaza, Boston Mass 02116. Uh, attention, uh, major projects uh, with project number file 606496. You can also submit your comments in email, which is the most preferred way and method at massdot major projects at dot.state.ma.us. For more project information, your QR code will direct you to the event website where you can get the information as well. I don't see any questions in the Q&A or any raised hands. Okay. What was that, Alan? I said we'll give everyone a few more moments and then uh, if we don't have any uh, questions or comments, we can conclude the uh, public hearing. Okay. This open for my note is currently about 62 people in attendance. Okay. Oh, 
We got a raise hand. Okay. H. Parker James. Yeah, hi. This is Parker James, um, calling from the Car Charles Gate Alliance. Just want to thank all of you for um, this excellent meeting. Uh, it's so great after all this time to see um, the uh, images that you showed. Uh, I hope that uh, this presentation will be quickly available up on your website um, so that we can refer to the images um, uh, in our comments letters. So thank you all very much. And thanks also to the um, public for um, expressing their views. It's uh, very important to have an exchange of views um, at, at this point in the design process. So thanks to everyone. Thank you so much. And we have another uh, kind of positive comment to close out with. Maria Castillo from BTD. Just wanted to thank the MassDOT team for all the work they've put into this proposal. We are very excited for this project at the city of Boston and look forward to working on the details to ensuring safety for all road users. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. So before Alwyn close the public hearing, um, if you have any more questions and comments, the best way to send your comments and questions is through the, the email address you see on the screen, MassDOT major projects at dot.state.ma.us. Okay. Um, with that said, uh, we appreciate all of you for attending this public hearing once again. We encourage you to put your comments in writing so that we can thoughtfully respond to each one of your comments. Again, please submit your comments in writing within 10 business days of this public hearing. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing has now concluded. The time now is 7.51 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.